In recent years, there's been a lot of talk about how increased adoption of electrified vehicles might affect the automotive aftermarket. In this video, we're going to take a look at one EV technology and whether or not it could put the brakes on your parts sales. Regenerative braking takes the kinetic energy produced by the forward motion of the vehicle and turns it into electrical energy. It's helpful to think of this in the context of the law of energy, which states that energy is neither created nor destroyed. It simply changes from one form of energy into another form of energy. In the standard friction braking systems that most cars and trucks use today, the act of braking produces energy, which is dissipated into the air as heat. In regenerative braking systems, which are used on hybrid and all electric vehicles, some of that kinetic energy is sent to the batteries and stored for later use. Let's talk about how that works. In a vehicle with regenerative braking, the battery provides power to the electric motor, which supplies the electricity to turn the wheels. When the driver hits the brake pedal, the process is reversed. Instead of consuming electricity to turn the wheels, the rotating wheels turn the motor and generate electricity using the vehicle's kinetic energy. The kinetic energy not only can be stored as energy for the battery, but also as an aid to the friction braking system, helping to slow the vehicle down by applying resistance to the wheels. While all this might sound a little scary for parts sellers, keep in mind that regen braking systems aren't able to provide the necessary braking power for all driving situations, such as high and low speed travel. That's why hybrids and EVs still have traditional hydraulic braking components. Typically, the hydraulic system is engaged in panic and emergency stop situations and from the last 10 miles an hour down to zero, although it depends on the vehicle model. With regenerative braking handling the majority of braking force on a hybrid or EV, you're going to see a lot less wear on the friction brake components. But that doesn't mean that the brake pads, hardware, rubber seals, and boots and other components can't fail for reasons other than general wear and tear. For example, under average driving conditions, the brake pads on a hybrid or EV might not reach conventional operating temperatures, and corrosion can build up between the backing plate and the friction materials due to the intrusion of water, road salt, and ice removal chemicals. This corrosion between the friction material and the backing plate can cause the friction material to separate. That's why you should always recommend a high-quality, corrosion-resistant brake pad for hybrids and EVs to avoid problems. Also, since it's impossible to perform a conventional break-in bedding procedure on a test drive, make sure that the brake pad manufacturer promises excellent performance right out of the box. I'm Josh Cable. Thanks for watching.